Welcome to part one of the Jumper Virtual Lab video tutorial. In this episode, I'll be walking through how to install and use the Jumper command line interface and how to run applications in the virtual lab. Before we get going, let me say a few words about the examples I'm going to use in this tutorial. Jumper doesn't need the source code. It works with binary or hex files that are identical to those you're going to execute on your actual device. For this tutorial, I'm going to use the firmware files for the NRF52 development kit. The NRF52 has a Cortex-M4 MCU with a 2.4 GHz radio component. It's used mainly for BLE applications. It also has a few buttons and LEDs right here on the board. And the samples we used for this tutorial are located right here uh, through this link. You can use the 14.2 SDK that we used, or you could use the 12 one as well. It doesn't matter. Our virtual lab runs any type of compiled firmware. In order to compile the firmware, we use the ARM GCC toolchain right here from ARM's official website. Let's start with building one of the samples from the NRF SDK. I'll naturally start with Blinky, so I'm going to, from the SDK root directory, I'm going to enter the Blinky folder right here, and I'm going to use the ARM GCC folder of it, and I'm just going to hit make. From this point, we have a firmware binary located right here that we can use with a virtual lab. Instead of running it on a device, I'm going to run it in the virtual lab. All right, so we're ready to install Jumper. Jumper is available as a Python 2 model and can be installed via pip. Python 3 support is coming soon. Let's just enter pip install Jumper. And the next step would be going to vlab.jumper.io to get a config.json file for your personal access token. I'm going to skip that part as I already had set up on this computer. This is just a security measure that helps to protect your data. I'm doing this inside of a Python virtual environment. And this is something that you want to do if you don't want to install Jumper with uh, sudo permissions. Let me clear this up. Now we're ready for the fun part. Let's run some binary firmwares on our Jumper virtual lab. So I'm just going to hit Jumper, run, minus B with the firmware location. I can use the bin file or the hex file. I'm going to hit enter. Virtual device is loading with the firmware and it's actually going to run, but we're not going to see anything because this application only toggles GPIO ports on and off. It toggles port 17, 18, 20, uh, and 19 uh, because that's where the LEDs are connected to on this board. In order to see that on the virtual lab, I'm just going to add dash dash GPIO. And now I can actually see sort of a logic on the GPIOs on the device. This is pretty awesome. And you can see that it's actually toggling ports uh, 17, 18, 19, and 20 on and off, and you can see the pin levels right here. Pretty neat. Let's try another one. So I'm going to go to a different example. Let's go for the, uh, let's see, let's go for the programmable peripheral interface. I'm going to step out to the correct folder real quickly. And PPI, uh, we're going to hit the right board and no soft device, and we want the ARM GCC environment. I'm gonna hit make. The application is building. And from this point, I'm gonna hit jumper, run. I'm gonna add minus U for UART prints, because this application prints UART uh, log prints to the, uh, to the screen, and I'm gonna hit uh, minus B with the firmware location and enter. Virtual device is loading and what we expect to see is the same prints that would be printed if you would connect to the serial port on the device will now be printed right here on the screen. Perfect. 
And this is the expected behavior. The application prints uh, 10 numbers onto the screen, waits for one uh, for a certain period of time, and continues to print again. And this is how you get UART prints, UART log prints on your screen. Pretty cool, right? If you want to see more of these cool flags that you can turn on jump or run, just hit jump or run minus H. And you get a list of really cool things that you can do. You can connect to GDB debugger, which I'm going to show in one of the following chapters. And I'm going to show some of the tracing options as well. Thank you.